Connection. I'm your host Jason Whiting and today we have guest Paul Watson, an Assistant County Manager and Economic Development Director, and Shirley Cornett, the Supervisor and Superintendent out of the Apache Railway. Welcome to the show. We're glad to have you guys here today. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Appreciate your guys' time. A lot of activity and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the public's been really following what's been going on with Apache Railway today. So or over the last two years, I guess it's been. So kind of excited to have you here today and to let the public know kind of what's going on firsthand and directly here from the Apache Railway. Absolutely. Shirley, if you don't mind, I kind of, if you can share with the audience here, uh, just kind of a history and give us an update as to kind of how it all started, the Apache Railway and how we got to this point today as far as timeline. Well, Apache Railway is almost 98 years old now. Um, it will be in September of this year anyway. It started in the timber industry. Um, when the McNary Mill was open. Um, they started hauling timber out of there to Holbrook to BNSF. That's where we interchange with uh, um, our, all of our cars in and outbound. And um, so they started in the timber industry hauling that kind of stuff. They also went on up to Maverick, which it was a little uh, timber industry town, but it's no longer there. When when they began, it was up on a lot of the reservation areas and stuff like that. And the timber industry, as we all know, kind of went away with a lot of the um, environmental issues and the Mexican spotted owl, they kind of uh, closed up their timber industry. I've been there about 23 years. When I first went there to Apache, they were still heavy in the timber industry. Um, but since then, of course, it's kind of died off. Um, they were through the years, they were owned by several different companies. Um, the paper mill came in um, about 53 years ago, and they redid the line that Apache Railway ran. It actually ran down through the town of Snowflake, and um, they actually had a depot there. They actually also had a maintenance of way um, area down in the Snowflake um, town of, and. Um, when they redid the line to make it go out to the paper mill, then the paper mill became the owner, or we were a subsidiary, I guess, of the paper mill for the last 53 years before they closed their doors. And um, that was a, a big hit, of course, to the Apache Railway. Um, they were about 97% of our business. And, and at that point, um, when it became primarily the paper mill, most of the rest of the line closed down, right? And it was yeah. just that short line between the paper mill up to Holbrook? Yeah, they, they uh, actually tore up 72 miles of track that ran up through McNary and up to the Maverick. Um, they uh, tore that all down. The paper mill came there because of what what is there and available. The aquifer that runs through there is just enormous and of course as a paper mill they needed a lot of water. Um, there was electricity and natural gas already there. so. They didn't just pick a spot and say, this is where I'm going to come. You know, they did all their statistics on it. The rail line brought in, in the beginning, I would say um, probably about 75% of, they were, uh, they were actually a wood pulp mill in the beginning. And um, then they changed in the early 80s to 100% recycling um, with the scrap paper to make paper. But um, as time went on, it was owned by several different companies. Um, Southwest Forest Industries was first, and then it became Stone Container, and then Abitibi and Catalyst at its demise. With, uh, with that being said, I mean, it, it got us to where, in 2012, we ended up having the closure of the paper mill. Right. You'd mentioned that it was, as far as utilization, uh, they actually had ownership as well, but utilization, they were the primary user. Um, they were. What we, was the percentage again? Um, they were 97% of Apache's business, so at its demise, uh, we only had one online customer, which was uh, Pigs for Farmer John, which is located at our mile post 16. So I think that's important for people to understand. A lot of people, I, I, I had heard in the communities initially, some feedback, while most positive, some feedback from some was, well, if it can, it should be able to sustain itself and be able to do, and, and the fact is, quite frankly, and I think that's hopefully we'll be able to talk about it today, um, through your leadership, through the leadership of Steve Brophy and some of the other people that you have there and the employees that are there, you have been able to find a way to sustain yourself and find a way forward. 
but when you lose overnight by no choice of your own, right. 97% pre- right. of what's driving the business, right. you're a brand new baby going out and trying to find brand new contracts and those right. things to get on the line, which to, to your credit and to your leadership and to the rest of the people that are out there, I just applaud you guys for what you've done over the last couple of years. So mm, Thank you. It's, yeah. it's been a tough haul. It's not been an easy road for sure. Over the years, we had other customers um, when we were owned by the paper mill. We had Ergon Emulsions, which is, was the asphalt company that was there in Snowflake. And um, they closed their facility. A lot of their business was um, appropriated by the state in the sense of, you know, the road work and things like that. And budgets were cut. Thing, and and so therefore they closed that facility. But they do have facilities over in Las Vegas and down in Chandler. But over being able to have that relationship with them, we actually have done business with them since in their, some of their car storage. So, um, but you're right. At the demise of the mill, we were a brand new company in many ways. Um, you know, we we were we were owned by such a huge corporation for so many years that they did so much for us. Um, things like insurance and um, benefits, things like that. And we, the people there at Apache Railway, we weren't involved in a lot of that. So we had a big learning curve ahead of us, a huge learning curve on insurances and benefits. And I mean, we had to reach out and put something in place very, very quickly. At the demise of the mill, we had 32 employees and we terminated down to eight. So at the beginning of now just the Apache Railway, not owned by those big corporations. Um, we basically were a small group of eight people. And our only online customer, as I stated, was, was PFFJ at that time. Well, like I said, I remember very well during that time, and, and when, it, when it closed, I happened to be on the Snowflake Town Council. And Mr. Watson was, of course, the town manager there. And uh, I'm gonna turn the time to you here in a second to talk about what that what that looked like for the people living in that area when that closure occurred. And quite frankly, I remember very well uh, just seeing very, a very emotional um, region, yes. losing a significant number of jobs and a lot of people that were scared. And quite frankly, now all of a sudden we're talking about losing another key piece of infrastructure with the railway uh, in combination with that. But Mr. Watson, do you mind talking about from the town's perspective at that point, what kind of it was going on in 2012 with the closure? Yeah, just real quickly, um, you know, it was uh, in September of 2012 that we got official notice uh, from Catalyst that uh, they were uh, filing bankruptcy, and that process was completed by December. So a very short time frame uh, to try and determine what we could do as a community um, to try and keep the infrastructure, as you mentioned, the railway, uh, from being a part of that uh, closure and scrapping that took place with the, uh, with the paper mill itself. Um, so uh, the, the town of Snowflake uh, stepped up, Steve Brophy with Aztec Land and Cattle stepped up, and uh, we got involved in the bankruptcy proceedings uh, to the point where we got the judge's attention and we're able to uh, make some inroads with uh, the importance of the Apache Railway to us and our intention to uh, do whatever we could to keep it operating. And uh, because of that, uh, we got the attention of at least one of the bidders for uh, the auction that was a part of the bankruptcy. And that bidder sat down with us and we talked about a game plan going forward um, to, uh, to pay them off. Obviously, uh, they had to acquire all the assets uh, in that uh, that auction, including the railway. So we said, okay, well, here's the railway piece of it, and here's what we'll do to uh, pay you back for that piece. Um, And uh, that, that had to, again, take place very quickly because the whole process happened in a very quick time frame, as as Shirley will (laughs) attest. Um, But we were able to accomplish that, and that was the successful bidder. Um, And so we made basically a one-year agreement that we would pay them back uh, that part of the investment they made. 
and uh, we immediately began seeking long-term low interest financing and we did that through the Federal Railway Administration that was our first attempt and uh, when we in fairness it would seem to be the logical one since they were created to try yeah. and help save the short line they, railways. I mean, absolutely. it would seem logical to go there, right? Yes. Their, so, yeah. uh, their program, their RIF program was specifically designated for this kind of activity. So yeah, it was in our minds uh, and in our early conversations with them, this was the ideal case of what that program was meant to, uh, to assist with. Uh, long story short, almost two years later, uh, we were denied and uh, that was that was quite a blow because that took us like I said almost a full two years to get to that point we only had originally a one-year note with uh, the group that acquired the assets uh, we had extended that for six months but after that we were kind of on a month-to-month -month basis telling them look it's getting real close they're telling us we're gonna make it Anyway, I could talk about that for a couple of days. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, as soon as we found out it was denied, we did try and go back and, and find out why and see if we couldn't uh, get a, a reevaluation of that. But um, it was determined that that probably wasn't a good avenue for us to pursue. Uh, so we started pursuing other options. Uh, USDA had a program. Uh, that we pursued, but now we had to do it in a very short time frame. Um, and uh, long story short, let's get to the good part, right? Uh, the good news is that um, Aztec Land and Cattle, along with uh, another investment partner, along with uh, some financing through the Arizona Commerce Authorities alone, um, and a, an associated bank with Commerce Authority, they were able to put the pieces together and, and do that um, uh, in the time frame necessary to, uh, to acquire those assets and take the investment group out of the picture. So we're in a good place today, we right, are, Shirley? We're in a great place today. Uh, we have a group that owns the railway that truly has the interest of keeping it for the economic future of the area and uh, that's a great thing no and i and i certainly would agree i remember very well i mean that process it seemed like everything was going down the tracks if you will very well and then it derailed then uh, it was kind of all hands on deck and and if if i may there were if i want to if correct me if i'm wrong but if i understand correctly i know that there was a group from uh snowflake was always at the table and i know that those council people uh, their mayor, um, and we, until we left, went over to the county. We're heavily involved in that, and then moving over to the county side of things, we also helped to bring the county to the table. Uh, the county, uh, and then with the leadership of Steve Brophy yourself, and then we also had a lot of help from a lot of the state leaders, uh, uh, Senator Senator McCain, right. Senator Flake, Representative Kirkpatrick, the governor himself, um, many of people that work with and for the governor all came together to try and see if we couldn't find a way to uh, partner and help keep this key piece of infrastructure here and allow the private sector to find a way forward, which they absolutely did. You know, and, uh, and, and in the meantime, I, so we've got that picture, how we got the success that was moving forward and all these things to try and find and secure the financing. Oh, but by the way, we still got to operate the railroad and keep everything going and get right. new contracts on board. That being said, if you don't mind, Shirley, and I know that we probably are getting a little bit short on time, but if you don't mind, what was going on there with the employees? I mean, to me, if I know that uh, this is how I feed my family and there's a real risk that this is going to be around tomorrow, I might start looking for a job. Right. And if you start having employees jumping ship, you start losing contracts and you start losing the ability to be able to hold everything together while everybody else is trying to find financing. Absolutely. So you truly kept the core going forward and the employees, and I can't tell you enough how much I respect you and those employees for all that you guys did. It was very uh, impressive that you guys were able to keep everything together, keep those employees. Uh, I think I shared at the board meeting the fact 
the way that I see it is people locked arms, looked each other in the eyes and said, I'll stand by you if you stand by me. And that's exactly how it was. Um, when you go to your employees and you tell them, I can give you a job today, but I don't know what tomorrow holds for this railroad. I don't know where we're headed, you know, especially after the letdown of, of you know, the RIF loan because we had worked and hammered at that for so long. And um, knowing that now we were under this time constraint. But these people are amazing. They, um, they just band together and said, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be here until they shut the doors. And um, they stuck together. But in the process of that, we had to decide what kind of business are we gonna run. With one online customer, that wasn't gonna keep the doors open. It wasn't going to keep us, you know, in the black as far as, you know, our bottom line goes. So we reached out to BNSF, and BNSF is a big partner for the railroad. Um, again, we only interchange with them. That's our only interchanges in Holbrook with them. But we reached out to them. We had done car repair under um, uh, compliances, FRA compliances and things like that. So they, we had a history with them and them knowing our work and knowing you know, our reputation. And um, so we reached out to them and said, what can we do for car repair? And they said, well, we'll send you some cars. Um, these are reworked cars. And it was a learning curve for all of the people that were there because we'd never done that heavy type uh, repair work on rail cars before. But again, we'd been doing just the FRA compliance issues and things like that of anything that came on our line. So they sent us some cars, we did the work, they, they were impressed with our work. Again, the, um, having that relationship over the years uh, with those people, not only on a local level, but all the way up into the corporations um, is what helped us. So they gave us some cars, we went to work, those guys just went at it and and I, you know, as it, anything new, it's kind of a, a, a you know, a process. You, you start out slow, learning and, and understanding uh, what to do first type thing. So we were taking baby steps in, in doing that car repair. But uh, they were impressed with our work. So BNSF said, you know, we have uh, our contracts are coming up for bid and, and we'd like you guys to be in on that. So we started bidding out car repair contracts. And we were uh, very fortunate that we were able to get, um, in the beginning, one car repair contract with BNSF. But doing that, not only in doing that, it opened the door in other parts of the railroad industry for Apache with BNSF. Uh, in early 2015, we started into uh, car cleaning. We do a dry car cleaning there. and. Um, they asked us if we'd be interested and we said absolutely. But really what carried us was the car shop. But we started looking at uh, what do we have here? Well, we have a whole lot of rail line that we weren't using. So we went into car storage right at the beginning. At the same time, we started into some light car repair. And um, we store for several different companies. Um, as I mentioned, Ergon, uh, they're no longer in Snowflake, but we kept that relationship start calling them on the phone. You know, at certain times of years, it's, it's as with any business, some at times it's high and sometimes it's low. Well, when you're a car owner or you lease cars, you have to find a place for those cars if they're not moving up and down the rail. So uh, we have six miles of branch line that goes down into Snowflake. Uh, so we started storing for Ergon Preferred Sands, who's over in Sanders, um, Phillips 66 Western Refining, um, and we also started storing uh, BNSF intermodal cars. And those come in, in in long trains. Those come in as a unit. They can be mile and a half to two miles long. Um, so we started into that so that we could basically turn our, our uh, red into a black and, and show that we could, we could carry ourselves and that we could when and if the financing happened the way it was supposed to, that we could, would be able to repay those loans. Um, and we did it, and we've grown our workforce now. We have uh, 21 employees, and uh, we're hiring, we're actually in the hiring process right now for another five more. So uh, we're just gonna continue to grow. We rebid in uh, late 2015, we rebid uh, car repair contracts and we got a couple of car repair contracts with BNSF. We secured a car repair uh, contract with Preferred Sands. Um, 
they some of their cars were having to go all the way back to Nebraska for car repair well we were right around the corner and because we had that relationship with them um, they asked us can you guys do these absolutely we can do it for you so well we've actually closed that contract and secured that at the end of 2015 but we we worked the cars in the whole year of 2015 so the relationships over time is what's been able to carry us for us reaching out in the reputation of the Apache Railway uh, and the wor their work ethics and and uh, we've done I, I'm so proud of my people because I can go out and I can get the business but I can't go out there and I can't work the cars I can't do that type stuff so I rely on those people and they're a great great bunch of people to work with so. it's kind of the dream team when I've had a chance to go out there I absolutely understand why it's been able to be successful and I've had a chance to meet some of those people that, that work there with you and, yeah. and for you and you really do have a good team. I mean you look at what was able to occur and uh, it really, this is one of the reasons why I love doing uh, what I do and being able to be a part of and trying to find ways to help open doors f to work with people like yourself so you guys can walk through those doors and you guys did it all. I mean, what you guys did and able to get contracts and able to keep the, the employees happy and there and, and really, quite frankly, preparing yourself so that when a door was opened, that the financing made sense. Right. You know, and uh, it's tremendous to really, uh, I, don't, I don't know that people can really understand what you guys really went through, what you were able to accomplish, but uh, it's tremendous and I congratulate you on what you're able to do. And quite frankly, I think it's opened a new door and we're, we're in a new season for Navajo County. Uh, Absolutely. Looking forward now. I mean, I know with Mr. Watson and myself, as we've met with a number of businesses that have looked at coming into this area, uh, specifically in the way of manufacturing and those types of things, every single one of them, um, I, I mean, sincerely, I think almost right. every single one of them have mentioned the Apache Row being a key piece of infrastructure in order for them to consider the opportunity to be here. And I know right now that you guys are currently working with uh, some, some opportunities that mm -hmm. could be a significant number of jobs. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. yeah. So. And, um, and, and we're excited about that because we have the car repair and the car storage, that sort of thing. But, you know, um, we're a freight rail, railroad. That's, that's where we got our start from, and that's where, you know, what, what really is the money maker in any kind of a railroad is the freight part of it. So we're hoping that this opportunity turns into um, something much larger than we've ever really done before. Um, it will be something different for the Apache Railway. Um, it'll be unit trains of uh, cars that we've never done before. Um, it's going to take some more training uh, f uh, because they'll be called shuttle trains. And we'll be using BNSF power to bring them in on. So we have to go out and we have to spend some money to train our people to be able to actually drive the BNSF engines because they're nothing like ours. We run the Alcos. And, um, they're they're old but they're the workhorses from you know the 60s they were actually each one of them 63 and 64 series we have seven of them and uh, so another learning curve for apache railway but an opportunity that we we uh, hope comes to life for sure well it's exciting to see this new horizon and new opportunities i mean you go back and look at big picture what went on you know i mean brand new baby a lot of people saying, hey, it should be able to sustain itself. I don't know, my babies, I, I, I love my kids. They're great kids. But if we would have let them be on their own at that young of an age, I don't know how well they would have done. <laughs> but by standing and working together, that's one of the reasons why I love living up here and I'm proud to raise my family in this region is how people work together and come yeah. together, especially for good causes like this. And uh, finding a way forward. And now you guys have your feet underneath you. You guys have got a way forward. And quite frankly, because of it, we have some opportunities to try and really help out some of our people here in Navajo County that are that are needing jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that we need jobs and we're looking for opportunities. And another person I want to make sure that we, we talk about, I understand that Hormel is one of the contracts that you work with. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I know that they worked a lot in partnership with this they as did. well. So um, It was important to them to have that rail line there. Um, um, feed cars, they have feed cars coming from Nebraska all the way, you know, uh, across the United States and uh, they, they can't get their product. They have three different types of product that they bring in and they couldn't just get it from uh, any place local. They might be able to get some of it from out of New Mexico, but it's further out and, and uh, 
and uh, as far as uh, rail versus truck, it's a lot cheaper to move it by rail. So they were, uh, but they were in the midst of the helping too, knowing that they needed the Apache Railway to be there for their future as well. A, a great story that was able to, I mean, the significant number of jobs there, um, and able to work with the Apache Railway, save those jobs, save the jobs of the Hormel potentially, and bringing new jobs to, and a new, new season to Navajo County. I understand we're about out of time, so we're going to have to wrap this up. I sincerely appreciate uh, you being here today, having the opportunity to be able to talk with us about everything that's gone on, and uh, we thank you for joining us on Navajo County Connection, and we'll see you next month.